Part 1 of The Persians by Aeschylus, translated by E. D. A. Morshead. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Narrator read by Mary J. Chorus of Persian Elders. Read by Elizabeth Clatt. Read by Tara Flynn. Read by Sarah Terry. Atossa. Read by Christine G. A Messenger. Read by Libby Gone. Ghost of Darius. Read by Peter Tucker. Xerxes. Read by Todd. The scene is laid at the palace of Susa. Away unto the Grecian land hath passed the Persian armament. We, by the monarch's high command, we are the warders true who stand, chosen for honour and descent, to watch the wealth of him who went, guards of the gold and faithful styled by Xerxes, great Darius's child. But the king went nor comes again, and for that host we saw depart, arrayed in gold, my boding heart aches with a pulse of anxious pain, procedeful for its youthful king. No scout, no steed, no battle car, come speeding hitherward to bring news to our city from afar. Erewhile they went away, away, from Susa, from Ecbatana, from Kissa's time-worn fortress grey, passing to ravage and to war. Some upon steeds, on galleys some. Some in close files they passed from home. All upon warlike errand bent. A mysteries, Artaphernes went, as Taspes, Megabazes high. Lords of the Persian chivalry, marshals who serve the great king's word, chieftains of all the mighty horde. Horsemen and bowmen streamed away, grim in their aspect, fixed to slay, and resolute to face the fray. With troops of horse careening fast, Masistes, Ardambasis passed, Emmaus too, the bowman brave, Sosthenes, Pharadacus drave, and others the all-nursing wave of Nihilus to the battle gave. Came Sususcanes, warrior wild, and Pegas Tagon, Egypt's child. The brave Arsames from afar did holy Memphis launch to war. And Ariomardus, high in fame, from Thebes the immemorial came, and oarsmen skilled from Nihilus' fen, a countless crowd of warlike men. And next the dainty Lydians went, soft rulers of a continent, Mitragathes and Arcteus bold, in twin command their ranks controlled, and Sardis' town that teems with gold sent forth its squadrons to the war. Horse upon horse, and car on car, double and triple teams they rolled, in onset awful to behold. From Tamala's sacred hill there came the native hordes to join the fray, and upon Helus neck to lay the yoke of slavery and shame. Mardin and Therubis were there, bright anvils for the foeman's spear. The Mysian dart men sped to war, and the long crowd that onward rolled from Babylon enriched with gold. Captains of ships and archers skilled to speed the shaft and those who wield the scimitar, the eastern band, who by the great king's high command swept to subdue the western land. Gone are they, gone. Ah, well a day. The flower and pride of our array. And all the east land from whose breast came forth her bravest and her best, craves longingly with boding dread. Parents for sons and brides new wed, for absent lords and dated by day, shudder with dread at their delay ere now they have passed o'er the sea the manifold host of the king they have gone forth to sack and to burn ashore on the westland they spring with cordage and rope they have bridged the seaway of heli to pass o'er the strait that is named by thy name o daughter of athamas they have anchored their ships in the current they have bridled the neck of the sea the shepherd and lord of the east hath bidden a roadway to be. From the land to the land they pass over, 
a herd of the high king's best. Some by the way of the waves, and some o'er the planking have pressed. For the king is a lord and a god. He was born of the golden seed that erst upon Danae fell. His captains are strong at the need. And dark is the glare of his eyes, as eyes of a serpent blood-fed, and with manifold troops in his train, and with manifold ships hath he sped. Yea, sped with his Syrian cars, he leads on the lords of the bow, to meet with the men of the west, the spear-armed force of the foe. Can any make head and resist him when he comes with the roll of a wave? No barrier nor phalanx of might, no chief, be he ever so brave, for stern is the onset of Persia, and gallant her children in fight. But the guile of the god is deceitful, and who shall elude him by flight? And who is the lord of the leap, that can spring in a line and evade? For a tay deludes and allures, till round him the meshes are laid, and no man his doom can escape. It was writ in the rule of high heaven, that in tramp of the steeds and in crash of the charge, the war cry of Persia be given. They have learned to behold the forbidden, the sacred enclosure of sea, where the waters are wide and in stress of the wind the billows roll hoary to lee. And their trust is in cable and cordage, too weak in the power of the blast. And frail are the links of the bridge, whereby unto Hellas they passed. Therefore my gloom-wrapped heart is rent with sorrow for what may hap to-morrow. Alack for all the Persian armament. Alack, lest there be sent dread news of desolation, Zeus's land, bereft, forlorn, unmanned. Lest the grey Kissian fortress echo back the wail, Alack, alack! The sound of women's shriek who wail and mourn with fine spun raiment torn. The chariot tears went forth nor come again, and all the marching men, even as a swarm of bees have flown afar, drawn by the king to war, crossing the sea bridge linked from side to side that doth the waves divide. And the soft bridal couch of bygone years is now bedewed with tears. Each princess clad in garments delicate wails for her widowed fate. Alas, my gallant bridegroom, lost and gone, and I am left alone. But now, ye warders of the state, here in this hall of old renown behoves that we deliberate in council deep and wise debate, for need is surely shown. How fareth he, Darius's child? the persian king from perseus styled comes triumph to the eastern bow or hath the lance point conquered now enter atossa see yonder comes the mother queen light of our eyes and godlike sheen the royal mother of the king fall we before her well it were that all is one we sue to her and round her footsteps cling queen among deep-girded Persian dames thou highest and most royal. Hooray, mother, thou of Xerxes and Darius's wife of old. To godlike sire and godlike son we bow us and are loyal, unless on us an adverse tide of destiny has rolled. Therefore come I forth to you from chambers decked and golden, where long ago Darius laid his head with me beside and my heart is torn with anguish, and with terror I am holden, and I plead upon your friendship, and I bid you to my side. Darius, in the old time, by aid of some immortal, raised up the stately fabric, our wealth of long ago, but I tremble lest it totter down, and ruin porch and portal, and the whirling dust of downfall rise above its overthrow. Therefore a dread unspeakable within me never slumbers, saying, Honour not the gods of wealth if men have ceased to grow, nor deem that men, apart from wealth, can find their strength in numbers. We shudder for our light and king, though we have gold and o. No light there is in any house save presence of the master. So runs the saw, ye aged men, and truth is says indeed. On you I call, the wise and true, to ward us from disaster, 
for all my hope is fixed on you to prop us in our need queen mother of the persian land to thy commandment bowing whate'er thou wilt in word or deed we follow to fulfil not twice we need thine high behest our faith and duty knowing in counsel and in act alike thy loyal servants still long while by various visions of the night am i beset since two ionian lands with marshalled host my son went forth to war yet never saw i presage too distinct as in the night now past attend my tale a dream i had two women nobly clad came to my sight one robed in persian dress the other vested in the dorian garb and both right stately and more tall by far than woman of to-day and beautiful beyond disparagement and sister sprung both of one race but by their natal lot one born in hellas one in eastern land there as it seemed unto my watching eyes roused each the other to a mutual feud the which my son perceiving set himself to check and soothe their struggle and anon yoked them and set the collars on their necks and one the aeonian proud in this array paced in high quietude and lent her mouth obedient to the guidance of the rain but restively the other strove and broke the fittings of the car and plunged away with mouth unbitten o'er their broken yoke my son was hurled and lo darius stood in lamentations over his fallen child him xerxes saw and rent his robe in grief such was my vision of the night now past but when arising i had dipped my hand in the fair lustral stream i drew towards the altar in the act of sacrifice having in mind to offer as their due the sacred meal-cake to the averting powers lords of the right that banisheth ill dreams when lo i saw an eagle fleeing fast to phoebus shrine o oh, friends i stayed my steps too scared to speak for close upon his flight a little falcon dashed in winged pursuit plucking with claws the eagle's head while he could only crouch and cower and yield himself scared was i by that sight and eke to you no less a terror must it be to hear for mark this well if xerxes have prevailed he shall come back the wonder of the world if not still none can call him to account so he but live he liveth Persia's king queen it stands not with my purpose to abet these fears of thine nor to speak with glazing comfort nay but take thee to the shrine if thy dream foretold disaster sue to gods to bar its way and for thyself son state and friends to bring fair fate to-day next unto earth and to the dead be due libation poured and by thee let Darius's soul be wistfully implored. I saw thee, Lord, in last night's dream, a phantom from the grave. I pray thee, Lord, from earth beneath, come forth to help and save. To me and to thy son send up the bliss of triumph now, and hold the gloomy fates of ill dim in the dark below. Such be thy words, my inner heart good tidings doth foretell and that fair fate will spring thereof if wisdom guide us well loyal though that first has read this dream the vision of the night with loyalty to me the queen be then thy presage right and therefore as thy bidding is what time i pass within to dedicate these offerings new prayers i will begin alike to gods and the great dead who loved our lineage well yet one more word say in what realm do the athenians dwell far hence even where in evening land goes down our lord the sun say had my son so keen desire that region to overrun yea if she fell the rest of greece were subject to our sway hath she so great predominance such legions in array ay such a host as smote us sore upon an earlier day and what hath she besides her men and now of wealth in shore a mine of treasure in the earth a fount of silver ore is it in skill of bow and shaft that athens men excel nay they bear buckles in the fight and thrust the spear-point well 
and who is shepherd of their host and holds them in command to no man do they bow as slaves nor own a master's hand how should they bide our brunt of war the east upon the west that could darius's valiant horde in days of your attest a boding word to us who bore the men now far away nay as i dream the very truth will dawn on us to-day a persian by his garb and speed a courier draws anear he bringeth news of good or ill for persia's land to hear enter a messenger o walls and towers of all the asian realm o persian land o treasure house of gold how by one stroke down to destruction down hath sunk our pride and all the flower of war that once was persia's lieth in the dust woe on the man who first announceth woe yet must i all the tale of death unroll hark to me persians persia's host lies low o ruin manifold and woe and fear let the wild tears run down for the great doom is here this blow hath fallen to the utterance and i past hope behold my safe return too long alack too long this life of mine that in mine age i see this sudden woe condign as one who saw by no loose rumour led lords i would tell what doom was dealt to us alack how vainly have they striven our myriad hordes with shaft and bow went from the eastland to lay low hellas beloved of heaven piled with men dead yea miserably slain is every beach each reef of salamis thou sayest sooth ah oh, well a day battered amid the waves and torn on surges hither thither borne dead bodies blood-stained and forlorn in their long cloaks they toss and stray their bows availed not all have perished all by charging galleys crushed and whelmed in death shriek out your sorrow's wistful wail to their untimely doom they went ill strove they and to no avail and minished is their armament out on thee hateful name of salamis out upon athens mournful memory woe upon this day's evil fame thou athens art a murderess alack full many a persian dame is left forlorn and husbandless mute have i been a while and overwrought at this great sorrow for it passeth speech and parthus all desire to ask for it yet if the god sends evil men must bear and roll the record stand composed and tell although thy heart be groaning inwardly who hath escaped and of our leaders whom have we to weep what chieftains in the van stood sank and died and left us leaderless xerxes himself survives and sees the day then to my line thy word renews to dawn and golden day spring after gloom of night but the brave marshal of ten thousand horse artambaris is tossed and flung in death along the rugged rock selenian and dadakis no longer leads his troop but smitten by the spear from off the prow hath lightly leapt to death and tenagon in true descent a bactrian nobly born drifts by the sea-lashed reefs of salamis the isle of ajax gone lilaeus too gone arsamis and argestes all around the islet where the sea-doves breed dashed their defeated heads on iron rocks arcteus who dealt beside the fonts of the nile adues pharasiles and with them pharnucus from one galley's deck went down metallus too of chrysa lord and king of myriad hordes who led unto the fight three times ten thousand swarthy cavaliers fell with his swarthy and abundant beard incarnadine to red a crimson stain outrivaling the purple of the sea there magian arabus and artamis of bactria perished taking up alike in yonder stony land their long sojourn a mistress too he whose strenuous spear was foremost in the fight amphistraeus fell and gallant ariomardus by whose death brood sorrow upon sardis mysia mourns for sisamis 
and therubis lies low commander he of five times fifty ships born in lyrnessus his heroic form is low in death ungraced with sepulchre dead too is he the lord of courage high cilicia's marshal brave cyanesis than whom none dealt more carnage on the foe nor perished by a more heroic end so fell the brave so i speak of their doom summing in brief the fate of myriads ah well a day these crowning woes i hear the shame of persia and her shrieks of dole but yet renew the tale repeat thy words tell o oh, the count of those hellenic ships and how they ventured with their braked prows to charge upon the persian armament no if mere count of ships could win the day the persians had prevailed the greeks in sooth had but three hundred galleys at most and other ten select and separate but i am witness xerxes held command of full a thousand keels and those apart two hundred more and seven for speed renowned so stands the reckoning and who shall dare to say we persians had the lesser host nay we were bastard by an unseen power who swayed the balance downward to our doom in the ward of heaven doth pallas city stand how then is athens yet inviolate while her men live her bulwark standeth firm say how began the struggle of the ships who first joined issue did the greeks attack o circtis in his numbers confident o queen our whole disaster thus befell through intervention of some fiend or fate i know not what that had ill will to us from the athenian host some greek came o'er to thy son xerxes whispering this tale once let the gloom of night have gathered in the greeks will tarry not but swiftly spring to each his galley bench in furtive flight softly conniving safety for their life thy son believed the word and missed the craft of that greek foeman and the spite of heaven and straight to all his captains gave this charge as soon as sunlight warms the ground no more and gloom enwraps the sanctuary of sky range we our fleet in triple serried lines to bar the passage from the seething strait this way and that let other ships surround the isle of ajax with this warding word that if the greeks their jeopardy should scape by wary craft and win their ships a road each persian captain shall his failure pay by forfeit of his head so spake the king inspired at heart with overconfidence unwitting of the gods predestined will thereon our crews with no disordered haste did service to his bidding and pervade the meal of afternoon each rower then over the fitted rowlock looped his oar then when the splendour of the sun had set and night drew on each master of the oar and each armed warrior straightway went aboard forward the long ships moved rank cheering rank each forward set upon its ordered course and all night long the captains of the fleet kept their crews moving up and down the strait so the night waned and not one grecian ship made effort to elude and slip away but as dawn came and with her coursers white shone in fair radiance over all the earth first from the grecian fleet rang out a cry a song of onset and the island crags re-echoed to the shrill exulting sound then on us eastern men amazement fell and fear in place of hope for what we heard was not a call to flight the greeks rang out their holy resolute exulting chant like men come forth to dare and do and die their trumpets pealed and fire was in that sound and with the dash of simultaneous oars replying to the war chant on they came smiting the swirling brine and in a trice they flashed upon the vision of the foe the right wing first in orderly advance came on a steady column following then the rest of their array moved out and on and to our ears there came a burst of sound a clamour manifold on sons of greece on for your country's freedom strike to save wives children temples of ancestral gods graves of your fathers now all is at stake 
then from our side swelled up the mingled din of persian tongues and time brooked no delay ship into ship drave hard its brazen beak with speed of thought a shattering blow and first one greek bark plunged straight and sheared away bowsprit and stem of a phoenician ship and then each galley on some other's prow came crashing in a while our stream of ships held onwards till within the narrowing creek our jostling vessels were together driven and none could aid another each on each drave hard their brazen beaks or break away the oar banks of each other stern to stern while the greek galleys with no lack of skill hemmed them and battered in their sides and soon the hulls rolled over and the sea was hid crowded with wrecks and butchery of men no beach or reef was but with corpses strewn and every keel of our barbarian host hurried to flee in utter disarray thereon the foe closed in upon the wrecks and hacked and hewed with oars and splintered planks as fishermen hack tunnies or a cast of netted dolphins and the briny sea raging with the screams and shrieks of dying men until the night's dark aspect hid the scene had i ten days time to sum that count of carnage for too little know this well one day ne'er saw such myriad forms of death woe on us woe disaster's mighty sea hath burst on us and all the persian realm be well assured the tale is but begun the further agony that on us fell doth twice outweigh the sufferings i have told nay what disaster could be worse than this say on what woe upon the army came swaying the scale to a yet further fall the very flower and crown of persia's race gallant of soul and glorious in descent and highest held in trust before the king lies shamefully and miserably slain alas for me and for this ruined friends dead sayest thou by what fate overthrown an islet is there fronting salamis straight and with evil anchorage thereon pan treads the measure of the dance he loves along the sea beach thither the king sent his noblest that whene'er the grecian foe should scape with shattered ships unto the isle we might make easy prey of fugitives and slay them there and from the washing tides rescue our friends it fell out otherwise than he divined for when by aid of heaven the hellenes held the victory on the sea their sailors then and there begirt themselves with brazen mail and bounded from their ships and then enringed the islet point by point so that our persians in bewilderment knew not which way to turn on every side battered with stones they fell while arrows flew from many a string and smote them to death then at last with simultaneous rush the foe came bursting on us hacked and hewed to fragments all that miserable band till not a soul of them was left alive then xerxes saw disaster's depth and shrieked from where he sat on high surveying all a lofty eminence beside the brine whence all his armaments lay clear in view his robe he rent with loud and bitter wail and to his land force swiftly gave command and fled with shame beside him now lament that second woe upon the first imposed out on thee fortune thou hast foiled the hope and power of persia to this bitter end my son went forth to wreck his great revenge on famous athens all too few they seemed our men who died upon the fennel field vengeance for them my son had mind to take and drew on his own head these whelming woes but thou say on the ships that scaped from wreck where didst thou leave them make thy story clear the captains of the ships that still survived fled in disorder scudding down the wind while our land force on boeotian soil fell into ruin some beside the springs dropping before they drank and some outworn pursued and panting all their life away the rest of us our way to focus one and thence to doris and the melian gulf where the soft stream spercius laves the soil 
thence to the northward did pithiotis plain and some thessalian fortress lend us aid for famine pinched we were and many died of drought and hunger's twofold present scourge thence to magnesia we came and the land where macedonians dwell and crossed the ford of axius and bolby's reedy fen and mount pangeus in edonian land there in the very night we came the god brought winter ere its time from bank to bank freezing the holy strymon's tide each man who heretofore held lightly of the gods now crouched and proffered prayer to earth and heaven then after many orisons performed the army ventured on the frozen ford yet only those who crossed before the sun shed its warm rays one to the farther side for soon the fervour of the glowing orb did with its keen rays pierce the ice-bound stream and men sank through and thrust each other down best was his lot whose breath was stifled first but all who struggled through and gained the bank toyfully wending through the land of thrace have made their way a sorry scanted few unto this homeland let the city now lament and yearn for all the loved and lost my tale is truth yet much untold remains of ills that heaven has hurled upon our land spirit of fate too heavy were thy feet those ill to match that sprang on persia's realm woe for the host to rack and ruined hurled a warning of the night prophetic dream thou didst foreshadow clearly all the doom while ye old men made light of woman's fears ah well yet as your divination ruled the meaning of the sign i hold it good first that i put up prayer unto the gods and after that forth from my palace bring the sacrificial cake the offering due to earth and to the spirits of the dead too well i know it is a timeless right over a finished thing that cannot change but yet i know not there may come of it alleviation for the after-time you it beseems in view of what hath happened to advise with the loyal hearts our loyal guards and to my son if e'er my coming forth he should draw hitherward give comfort meet escort him to the palace in all state lest to these woes he add another woe exit atasa end of part one part two of the persians by aeschylus translated by e d a morshead this is a librivox recording all LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Zeus, Lord and King, to death and not our countless host by thee is brought. Deep in the gloom of death today lie Susa and Ecbatana. How many a maid in sorrow stands and rends her tire with tender hands. How tears run down in common pain and a woeful mourning for the slain. O delicate in dole and grief, ye Persian women, past relief is now your sorrow. To the war your loved ones went and come no more. Gone from you is your joy and pride, severed the bridegroom from the bride. The wedded couch luxurious is widowed now, and all the house pines ever with insatiate sighs, and we stand here and bid arise for those who forth in ardour went and come not back, the loud lament. Land of the East, thou mournest for the host, bereft of all thy sons, alas the day, for them whom Xerxes hath led, Xerxes lost, Xerxes who wrecked the fleet and flung our hopes away. How came it that Darius once controlled, and without scathe the army of the bow, loved by the folk of Susa, wise and bold? Now is the land force lost, the shipmen sunk below. Ah, for the ships that bore them, woe is me, bore them to death and doom. The crashing prows of fierce Ionian oarsmen swept the sea, and death was in their wake, and shipwreck murderous.
Late, late, and hardly, if true tales tell they, did Xerxes flee along the wintry way and snows of Thrace. But ah, the first who fell lie by the rocks or float upon Kykria's bay. Mourn, each and all, waft heavenward your cry, stung to the soul. Bereaved, disconsolate. Wail out your anguish till it pierce the sky in shrieks of deep despair, ill-omened, desperate. The dead are drifting, yea, are gnawed upon by voiceless children of the stainless sea or battered by the surge. We mourn and groan for husbands gone to death, for childless agony. Alas, the aged men who mourn today, the ruinous sorrows that the gods ordained. O'er the wide Asian land the Persian sway can force no tribute now, and can no rule sustain. Yea, men will crouch no more to fallen power, and kingship overthrown. The whole land o'er, men speak the thing they will, and from this hour the folk whom Xerxes ruled obey his word no more. The yoke of force is broken from the neck. The isle of Ajax and the encircling wave reek with a bloody crop of death and wreck of Persia's fallen power that none can lift nor save. Re-enter Atasa in mourning robes. Friends, whoso are versed in human ills, knoweth right well that when a wave of woe comes on a man he sees in all things fair, while in flood tide of fortune tis his mood to take that fortune as unchangeable, wafting him for ever forward, mark me now, the God's all thwart purpose doth confront my eyes, and all is terror to me in my ears, there sounds a cry, but not a triumph now, so I am scared at heart by woe so great, therefore I went forth from the house anew, born in no car of state, no robbed in pride, as heretofore but bringing for the sire, who did not beget my son, libertations meet, for holy rites that shall appease the dead. The sweet white milk, drawn from a spotless cow, the oozing drop of golden honey culled, by the flower-haunting bee, and therewithal, pure draughts of water from a virgin spring. And lo, besides the stainless effluence, born of the wild wine's bosom, shining store, treasured to age this bright and luscious wine and eke the fragrant fruit upon the boar of the grey olive tree which lives its life in sprouting leafage and the twining flowers bright children of the earth's fertility but you o oh friends above these offerings poured to reconcile the dead bring out your dirge to summon up darius from the shades himself a shade and I will pour these draughts, which earth shall drink, unto the gods of hell. Queen, by the Persian land adored, by thee be this libation poured, passing to those who hold command of dead men in the spirit land, and we will sue in solemn chant that gods who do escort the dead in nether realms our prayer may grant. Back to us be Darius led. O oh, earth, and Hermes, and the king of Hades, our Darius, bring. For if beyond the prayers we prayed, he knoweth aught of help or aid. He, he alone in realms below, can speak the limit of our woe. Doth he hear me, the king we adored, who is God among gods of the dead? Doth he hear me send out in my sorrow the pitiful manifold cry, the sobbing lament and appeal? Is the voice of my suffering sped to the realm of the shades? Doth he hear me and pity my sorrowful sigh? O earth and ye lords of the dead, release ye that spirit of might who in Susa the palace was born. Let him rise up once more to the light. There is none like him, none of all that e'er were laid in Persian sepulchres. Born forth he was to honoured burial, a royal heart, and followed by our tears. God of the dead, O oh, give him back to us, 
Darius, ruler glorious. He never wasted us with reckless war, God, counselor, and king beneath a happy star. Ancient of days and king, awake and come, rise o'er the mounded tomb. Rise, plant thy foot with saffron sandal shod, father to us and God. Rise with thy diadem, O sire benign, upon thy brow. List to the strange new sorrows of thy line, sire of a woeful son. A mist of fate and hell is round us now, and all the city's flower to death is done. Alas, we wept thee once, and weep again. O Lord of lords, by recklessness twofold, the land is wasted of its men, and down to death are rolled wreckage of sail and oar, ships that are ships no more, and bodies of the slain. The ghost of Darius rises. Ye aged Persians, truest of the true, coevals of the youth that once was mine, what troubleth now our city? Hearken how it moans and beats the breast and rends the plain. And I, beholding how my consort stood beside my tomb, was moved with awe, and took the gift of her libation graciously. But ye are weeping by my sepulchre, and shrilling forth a sad, evoking cry, summon me mournfully, Arise, arise! No light thing is it to come back from death, for in good sooth the gods of nether gloom are quick to seize, but late and loath to free. Yet among them I dwell as one in power, and lo, I come, now speak and speed your words, lest I be blamed for tarrying over long. What new disaster broods o'er Persia's realm? With awe on thee I gaze, and standing face to face, I tremble as I did in olden days. Nay, but as I rose to earth again, obedient to your call, prithee, tarry not in parley, be one word enough for all. Speak, and gaze on me unshrinking, neither let my face appall. I tremble to reveal, yet tremble to conceal, things hard for friends to feel. Nay, but if the old-time terror on your spirit keeps its hold, speak thou, O royal lady, who didst couch with me of old. Stay thy weeping and lamenting, and to me reveal the truth. Speak, for man is born to sorrow. Yea, the proverb saith sooth, tis the doom of mortal beings if they live to see old age to suffer bale by land and sea through war and tempest's rage. O thou, whose blissful fate on earth all mortal will excelled, who, while the sunlight touched thine eyes, the Lord of all wert held, a god to Persian men thou wert, in bliss and pride and fame, I hold thee blessed to in thy death, o ere their ruin came. Alas, Darius, one brief word must tell thee all the tale, the Persian power is in their dust, Gone down in blood and bale. Speak. By what chance did man rebel or pestilence descend? Neither. By Athens' fatal shores our army met its end. Which of my children led our host to Athens? Speak and say. The froward Xerxes, leaving all our realm to disarray. Was it with army or with fleet on folly's quest he went? with both alike a twofold front of double armament. And how then did so large a host on foot pass o'er the sea? He bridged the ford of Hell's Strait by artful carpentry. How? Could his craft avail to span the torrent of that tide? To sooth, I say, some unknown power did fatal help provide. Alas, that power in malice came to his bewilderment. Alas, we see the end of all, the ruin on us sent. Speak, tell me how they fared therein, that thus ye mourn and weep. Disaster to the army came through ruin on the deep. Is all undone? Hath all the folk gone down before the foe? Yea, hark to Zeus's morning cry for warriors laid low. Alas for all our gallant aids, 
our Persia's help and pride. Ay, old with young, the Bactrian force hath perished at our side. Alas, my son, what gallant youths hath he sent down to death? Alone, or with a scanty guard, for so the rumour saith. He came? But how, and to what end? Doth aught of hope remain? With joy he reached the bridge that spanned the Hellspontine main. How? Is he safe in Persian land? Speak soothly, yea or nay. Clear and more clear the rumour comes, for no man to gain say. Woe for the oracle fulfilled, the presage of war launched on my son by will of Zeus. I deemed our doom afar in lap of time. But if a king push forward to his fate, the god himself allures to death that man infatuate. So now the very fount of woe streams out on those I loved. And mine own son, unwisely bold, the truth hereof hath proved. He sought to shackle and control the Hellespontine wave that rushes from the Bosphorus with fetters of a slave. To curb and bridge with welded links the streaming waterway and guide across the passage broad his manifold array. Ah, folly void of counsel! He deemed that mortal wight could thwart the will of heaven itself and curb Poseidon's might. Was it not madness? Much I fear, lest all my wealth and store pass from my treasure-house to be the snatcher's prize once more. Such is the lesson, ah, too late, to eager Xerxes taught, trusting random consulars and hair-brained men of naught, who said, Darius' mighty wealth and frame to us did bring, but thou art not a blunted spare, a palace-keeping king. Unto those sorry counsellors a readier air he lent, and led away to hell's shore his fated armament. Therefore through them hath come calamity most huge and past forgetting, nor of old did ever such extermination fall upon the city Susa. Long ago Zeus in his power this privilege bestowed, that with a guiding sceptre one sole man should rule this Asian land of flock and herd. Over the folk, a mead, a Steerges did grasp the power, then Siaxeres ruled in his sire's place and held the sway aright steering his state with watchful wariness. Third in succession, Cyrus, blessed of heaven, held rule and established peace for all his clan. Lydian and Phrygian won he to his sway, and wide Ionia to his yoke constrained, for the god favoured his discretion sage. Fourth in the dynasty was Cyrus's son, and fifth was Mardus, Scandal of his land and ancient lineage. Him are Taphrenes, hardy of heart, within his palace slew, aided by loyal plotters, set for this. And I too gained the lot for which I craved, and oftentimes led out a goodly host, yet never brought disaster such as this upon the city. But my son is young and reckless in his youth, and heedeth not the warnings of my mouth. Mark this, my friends, born with my birth, coeval with mine age. Not all we kings who held successive rule have wrought, combined, such ruin as my son. How then, O King Darius, whitherward dost thou direct thy warning? From this plight how can we Persians fare towards hope again? By never more assailing Grecian lands. Even though our Median force be double theirs, for the land's self protects its denizens. How meanest thou? By what defensive power? She wastes by famine a too countless foe. But we will bring a host more skilled than huge. Why, e'en that army, camped in Hellas still, shall never win again to home and wheel. How sayest thou, will not all the Asian host pass back from Europe over Hellas ford? Nay, scarce a tithe of all those myriads, if man may trust the oracles of heaven when he beholds the things already wrought. Not false with true but true with no word false, if what I trow be truth. My son has left a chosen rearguard of our host, 
in whom he trusts now with a random confidence they tarry where esopus laves the ground with rills that softly bless boeotia's plain there is it fated for them to endure the very crown of misery and doom requital for their god-forgetting pride for why they raided hellas had the heart to wrong the images of holy gods and give the shrines and temples to the flame defaced and dashed from sight the altars fell and each god's image from its pedestal thrust and flung down in dim confusion lies therefore for outrage vile a doom as dark they suffer and yet more shall undergo they touch no bottom in the swamp of doom but round them rises bubbling up the ooze so deep shall lie the gory clotted mass of corpses by the dorian spear transfixed upon plataea's field yea piles of slain to the third generation shall attest by silent eloquence to those that see let not a mortal vaunt him overmuch for pride grows rankly and to ripeness brings the curse of fate and reaps for harvest tears therefore when ye behold for deeds like these such stern requital paid remember then athens and hellas let no mortal wight holding too lightly of his present weal and passionate for more cast down and spill the mighty cup of his prosperity doubt not that over proud and haughty souls zeus lowers in wrath exacting the account therefore with wary warning school my son though he be lessened by the gods already to curb the vaunting that affronts high heaven and thou o venerable mother queen beloved of xerxes to the palace pass and take therefrom such raiment as befits thy son and go to meet him for his garb in this extremity of grief hangs rent around his body woefully unstitched mere tattered fragments of once royal robes go thou to him speak soft and soothing words thee and none other will he bear to hear as well i know but i must pass away from earth above unto the nether gloom therefore old men take my farewell and clasp even amid the ruin of this time unto your souls the pleasure of the day for dead men have no profit of their gold the ghost of darius sinks alas i true with pain for persia's woes many fulfilled and others hard at hand o spirit of the race what sorrows crowd upon me and this anguish stings me worst that round my royal son's dishonoured form hang rags and tatters degradation deep i will away and bringing from within a seemly royal robe will straight away strive to meet and greet my son foul scorn it were to leave our dearest in his hour of shame exit atasa ah glorious and goodly they were the life and the lot that we gained the cities we held in our hand when the monarch invincible reigned the king that was good to his realm sufficing fulfilled of his sway a lord that was peer of the gods the pride of a bygone day then could we show to the skies great hosts and a glorious name and laws that were stable in might as towers they guarded our fame there without woe or disaster we came from the foe and the fight in triumph enriched with the spoil to the land and the city's delight what towns ere the hollies he passed what towns ere he came to the west to the main and the isles of strymon and the thracian region possessed and those that stand back from the main enriched by their fortified wall gave o'er to darius the king the sceptre and sway over all those too by the channel of hella where southward it broadens and glides by the inlet propontis of thee and the strait of the pontic tides and the isles that lie fronting our seaboard and the east land looks on each one lesbo and chios and paros and samos with olive trees grown 
and Naxos and Mykonos's rock and Tinos with Andros hard by, and isles that in midmost Aegean aloof from the continent lie. And Lemnos and Icarus hold, all these to his sceptre were bowed, and Cnidos and neighboring roads. And Soli and Paphos the proud, and Cyprian Salamis, name child of her who hath wrought us this wrong. Yea, and all the Ionian tract, where the Greek-born inhabitants throng, and the cities are teeming with gold, Darius was lord of them all. And great by his wisdom he ruled, and ever there came to his call, in stalwart array and unfailing, the warrior chiefs of our land. And mingled allies from the tribes who bowed to his conquering hand. But now there are none to gainsay that the gods are against us. We lie subdued in the havoc of wreck, and whelmed by the wrath of the sky. Enter Xerxes in disarray. Alas, the day that I should fall into this grimmest fate of all, this ruin doubly unforeseen. On Persia's land what power of fate descends, what luring gloom of hate, how shall I bear my teen? My lips are loosened where they stand, where I behold this aged band. O oh God, I would that I, too, I, among the men who went to die, were whelmed in earth by fate's command. Ah, well a day, my king, ah, woe for all our heroes overthrow. For all the gallant hosts array, for Persia's honors passed away. For glory and heroic sway, mown down by fortune's hand to-day. Hark, how the kingdom makes its moan, for youthful valor lost and gone, by Xerxes shattered and undone. He, he hath crammed the maw of hell, with bowmen brave who nobly fell, their country's mighty armament, ten thousand heroes deathward sent. Alas for all the valiant band! O king and lord, thine Asian land down, down upon its knee is bent. Alas, a lamentable sound, a cry of ruth, for I am found a curse to land and lineage, with none my sorrow to assage. Alas, a death song desolate I send forth for thy homecoming, a scream, a dirge of woe and fate, such as the Asian mourners sing, a sorry and ill-omened tale of tears and shrieks and eastern wail. Ay, launch the woeful sorrow's cry, the harsh discordant melody, for lo, the power we held for sure hath turned to my discomfiture. Yea, dirges, dirges manifold, will I send forth for warriors bold, for the sea sorrow for our host. The city mourns, and I must wail, with clashing tears our sorrows tell, lamenting for the loved and lost. Alas, the god of war, who sways the scales of fight in diverse ways, gives glory to Ionia. Ionian ships in fenced array have reaped their harvest in the bay, a darkling forest field of fate, a sea, a shore of doom and hate. Cry out and learn the tale of woe. Where are thy comrades? Where the band who stood beside thee hand in hand a little while ago? Where now hath Ferendacus gone? Where Samus and where Pelagon? Where now is brave Agdabadus and Susas too and Atamas? Hath Susicanus passed away, the chieftain of Ecbatana? I left them, mangled castaways, flung from their Tyrian deck, and tossed on Salaminian waterways, from surging tides to rocky coast. Alack, and is Farnuchus slain? And are your Mardus brave in vain? Where is Sualces' heart of fire? Lilius, child of noble sire? Are Therubus and Memphis sped? Astigmas, Ardambaras dead? And where is brave Masistes, where? Sum up death's count that I may hear. Alas, alas, they came, their eyes surveyed ancestral Athens on that fatal day. Then with a rending struggle were they laid upon the land, 
and gasp their life away. And Batinochus's child, Alpistus Great, surnamed the Eye of State, saw you and left you, him who once of old ten thousand thousand fighting men enrolled? His sire was child of Sesamus, and he from Megabate sprang. Ah, woe is me, thou king of evil fate! Hast thou lost Parthus, lost Obaris great? Alas, the sorrow, blow succeedeth blow, On Persia's pride thou tellest woe on woe. Bitter indeed the pang for comrades slain, The brave and bold, thou strikest to my soul, Pain, pain beyond forgetting, hateful pain, My inner spirit sobs and sighs with dull. Another yet we yearn to see, and see not, Ah, thy chivalry Xanthus, thou chief of Mardian men countless, and thou on Chartus bright, and ye whose cars controlled the fight, Arsacus and Diaxus white, King Didactas, Lithamanas dear, and Ptolemus greedy for the spear, I stand bereft, not in thy train come they, as erst. Ah, ne'er again shall they return unto our eyes, car borne neath silken canopies. Yea. Gone are they who mustered once the host. Yea, yea, forgotten, lost. Alas, the woe and cost. Alas, ye heavenly powers, ye wrought a sorrow past belief, a woe of woes the chief. With aspect stern upon us Ate looms. Smitten are we, time tells no heavier blow. Smitten, the doom is plain. Curse upon curse, and pang on pang, we know. With the Ionian power we clashed in evil hour. Woe falls on Persia's race, yea, woe again, again. Yea, smitten am I, and my host is all to ruin hurled. Yea, verily, and mighty wreck hath sunk the Persian world. Holding up a torn robe and a quiver. See you this tattered rag of pride? I see it well a day. See you this quiver? Say, hath aught survived and scaped the fray? A store for darts it was erewhile. Remain but two or three. No aid is left. Ionian folk such darts unfearing see. Right resolute they are. I saw disaster unforeseen. Ah! Uh. Speakest thou of wreck, of flight, of carnage that hath been? Yea, and my royal robe I rent in terror at their fall. Alas, alas! alas. Yea, thrice alas! For all have perished all. Ah, woe to us! Ah, joy to them who stood against our pride. And all our strength is minished and sundered from our side. No escort have I. Nay, thy friends are whelmed beneath the tide. Wail, wail the miserable doom, and to the palace high. Alas, alas, and woe again. Shriek, smite the breast as I. An evil gift, a sad exchange of tears poured out in vain. Shrill out your simultaneous wail. Alas, the woe and pain! Oh, bitter is this adverse fate! I voice the moan with thee. Smite! Smite thy bosom, groan aloud for my calamity. I mourn and am dissolved in tears. Cry, beat thy breast amain! O king, my heart is in thy woe. Shriek, wail, and shriek again! Oh, agony! A blackening blow! A grievous stripe shall fall. Yea, beat anew thy breast, ring out the doleful Mycian call. An agony, an agony! Pluck out thy whitening beard. By handfuls, I, by handfuls, with dismal teardrops smeared. Sob out thine aching sorrow. I will thine best obey. With thine hands rend thy mantle's fold. Alas, woe worth the day. 
with thine own fingers tear thy locks, bewail the army's weird. By handfuls, yea, by handfuls, with tears of dole besmeared. Now let thine eyes find overflow. I wend in wail and pain. Cry out for me an answering moan. Alas, alas, again. Shriek with a cry of agony, and lead the doleful train. Alas, alas, the Persian land is woeful now to tread. Cry out and mourn, the city now doth wail above the dead. I sob and moan. I bid ye now be delicate in grief. Alas, the Persian land is sad and knoweth not relief. Alas, the triple banks of oars and those who died thereby. Pass, I will lead you, bring you home with many a broken sigh. Exeunt. End of part two. End of the Persians by Aeschylus.